In this video, we're going to take a look at the inventor application options, which control different ways on how the program operates. Now we can access these application options a couple different ways. The first way is from the Tools tab, and then on the Options panel, we can click Application Options. We can also access the application options from the I button in the upper left area of the screen, and then choose Options. Now we're not going to talk about every single little setting inside of this series of tabs in this window. If you want a detailed explanation for every setting inside of the application options windows, you can easily go down to the lower left area of the window and click on the help button to get a detailed explanation of every little single check mark and change you can make here. Instead, we're going to take a look at some high level things which you should be aware of to adjust your settings inside the software. Let's begin by looking at the general tab inside the window. A couple of things to be aware of are the username in the upper right. This controls some metadata that gets added to each file so that you can track who created each particular file you're looking for. That's very beneficial when you get to a document management system like Autodesk Vault. However, here inside of Just Basic Inventor, it has a very key point of helping you fill out your title blocks. So the username is a very important field. This will automatically map into the author field when a file is created. Right below that, we have physical properties. I always update this to perform a physical property update for a save on parts and assemblies. With that checked, it keeps my mass properties always up to date. I never have to go back and force an update or a refresh on a file in order to get proper mass calculations. Below that, we have an undo file size. The larger this undo file size is, the more undos you can perform. If you ever get to a point where you keep undoing and undoing and undoing, and you can't undo any further, it's because that this file size is not large enough. The annotation scale below it, I will usually bump that up just because I am not getting any younger. The larger font size for dimensions and text, it does help with the visual quality for me, so that's my personal preference. On the left hand side, if you would like to have prompting turned on so that if you get lost in a command and want to know what to do next, you can turn on the show command prompting dynamic prompts in order to see what step to do next. Below that, if you like keyboard shortcuts, you can turn on the command alias input dialog and that will show you which keyboard inputs you're typing in as a prompt so you can see that taking place. Below there, we have tooltip appearance. I usually will turn off tooltips and tool clips because I've been using the software long enough where I do not need those things. Now, the document tab tooltips are nice, especially if you are using an alphanumeric numbering system and you can't tell a file by name. When you're looking at your tabs at the bottom of your screen, with multiple files open, it will present itself a nice preview image or thumbnail of what that file is. On the next tab, we have the Save tab here. Here we have a Save Reminder. Inventor does not have an autosave function for very good pragmatic reasons. So instead, we have a Save Reminder in case you need a friendly nudge to update your files and save them. On the next tab for File, we have a series of paths which we can have for our locations, for templates, design data, content center files, projects, as well as a few other things which you don't normally adjust. At the bottom of this, we have some file open options and a file quick open. I'm gonna mention this down here at the bottom only because it's very important if you're working on a long-term project. If you have a project that you're gonna be opening the same assembly for six months straight, well, it'd be a good idea to have that assembly file cached so it opens up much faster every single time, especially if it's a large capital project. On the next tab, Colors, we can simply change how our colors appear to us as a user. It's important to note that whenever you change your color scheme, not only does your background change, but also your sketched lines, your projected lines, your work planes, your constraint preview colors, all those things will change when your color scheme changes. You can also choose a color scheme that you like on the left hand side, but then force your background to be different. So you can do a single color, a gradient, or also your own customized background image. I've had some users ask, can I put my logo on my screen? Well, absolutely. 
You just got to go into Microsoft Paint, put your image in there, use a white background or whatever background color you want, save that, and now load a background image by selecting this and then choosing the folder locator here to go out and find it. I'm going to stick with the default gradient color. We can also change how our cursor highlights things when we hover over them. We can do a pre-highlight or also an enhanced highlighting as well. On the next tab, display, is one setting that I wish they would just change permanently. And that's up here at the top called appearance. Now by default, it's set to use document settings. What that means is if I save a file in watercolor or wireframe or with shadows turned on, then the next time I open that file, no matter what user I am, it will open it up with those settings. I'd prefer to use application settings, click on my settings button here, and then whatever file I open up will open up based on my settings, not whoever saved it last. So I like the shaded with edges visual style. I like that sharp edge on the parts. If I'm working on smaller designs, or if I'm looking for something with more visual pop to it, I will turn on my ambient shadows as well. Now, I'm happy with what I have here. Okay. Every time I open a file, it's going to be the way I want it to appear. Down here on display, I control my view transition time. Now, this is the time that it takes for me to choose a new orientation and for it to get to that orientation. If I take that down to zero, you're basically going to see it skip right to that orientation with no rotation effect at all. If I increase the time, it's going to go slower. On the minimum frame rate to the right, if I bump this up to 20, which is actually a little bit more of an enhancement from previous years, I can reduce the amount of artifacting or ghosting on my components as I'm rotating a very large model set. And lastly, we have a few other settings at the bottom, such as zoom behavior. If you're used to AutoCAD and that's just the way you want to zoom, you can reverse the direction and it'll operate just like AutoCAD. You can also change how your zoom behavior works as far as zooming. Do you want to zoom to it based on a cursor or the window? The look at behavior at the bottom is a new setting to Inventor 2015. This allows me to control when I perform a look at command, especially on a sketch, does it rotate it to the minimum amount of rotation to get it flat, or does it align it with the local coordinate system? Normally, in the 2014 Inventor, this is the option that you have, the align with local coordinate, and it will skip it over, it will rotate all the way around to a positive Z looking down on your plane. Well, if you're on the back side of the plane, it was always a very big rotation that takes place. A minimum rotation will rotate it so it doesn't go beyond 180 degrees of total rotational movement. On the next tab, hardware, we're going to leave these settings here at performance. However, if you have a much higher end system, you can go up to quality. If you have a subpar system, you might go down to conservative. If for some reason you have to use software graphics, it's probably time to get a new computer. Next up is prompts. This is a way I can turn on and off application prompts from appearing when I do certain tasks. Normally I just say leave these alone, but if there's one prompt that just absolutely drives you bonkers, you can probably turn that off or suppress it. In general though, leave them alone. On the drawing tab, we have a lot of settings that relate to how our drawings will look and operate. So one of the major settings here is the enable part modification from within drawings. This allows me to edit a model dimension on a part drawing and then have that update the part. Well, that sometimes is deemed dangerous by a company because you could make a change to the drawing and think that, well, that change is going to be quick. It's not going to affect anything but it actually affected, let's say, 25 different assemblies where that part was used and you didn't know it. So generally, I like to change things in the parts, in the assemblies, and leave the drawings just to documentation and not for modification. That's my personal preference, but if you are a single user, you probably know enough about your design, you know where all those parts are used, that's maybe not so dangerous of an idea. A couple other settings inside of here, which I find are really commonly talked about, are the capacity and performance down here, the enable of background updates. This is the multi-threaded capability of your drawing environment. And I found with some older processors, as well as some issues with certain CPUs and processors, that sometimes your rastering graphics that you get in your drawings 
They're basically these little green brackets that appear around your views, just don't seem to ever go away. You might sit there for half an hour and you expect them to update and they're just not. So you could turn off the background updates, but that turns off your multi-threaded capability of working with drawings. So that's more of a troubleshooting thing to turn off the background updates, but be aware of it in case you run into problems with those green brackets around your views and drawings. Everything else on this tab is a little bit more of minutia. It's not something we're going to spend a lot of time really digging into. So let's go on to the next tab, Content Center. The very top one is a refresh out of date standard parts during placement. What that does for me is when I place a content center item in and there's already a modified one that's a previous version, it's really not what my current formula for that content center is anymore, it will refresh it during that placement. My next setting has to deal with if I have a custom family or a standard family inside Content Center, what do I do? Do I place it as custom 100% of the time or do I place it as standard? Now, anyone who's been using Inventor and Content Center for a long time knows that custom and standard go to two different folder locations. So it's very important you make sure you're aware of that setting and as you're saving files, where you're saving them to. The access options. If you are a single user, you don't share files with anybody else, you don't have a company library that you work with, then you're probably using Inventor desktop content. This is something that will load with your normal installation. The other option is the vault server. Now, a vault server is something that's free. It comes with your Inventor software, it comes with the product design suite, the Inventor suite, you name it. What you'd have to do, though, is install it on a separate server somewhere. And that is something that companies use when they have multiple users, let's say 10 of them, pulling from the same library, and they want to make sure that it's the same, that someone doesn't have their own variation of desktop content somewhere else, and someone else's is different as well. We want to make sure that we're pulling from the same core library. So if you are working in a design group and you're using desktop content, maybe it's time to rethink what you're doing there. But as a single user, Desktop contents, perfectly fine. The next tab, Assembly here, it has a lot of different settings for how we can work with assemblies, such as deferring updates from our assembly. That shouldn't be turned on. I'm going to turn mine off. If we want to have our last occurrence orientation for components, if we want to section all of our parts, if we want to turn on the audio notification for when a constraint or a joint takes place, these are all some very basic settings you can adjust. Now here in the center of the screen, we have cross-part geometry projection. This controls whether our features, when we're doing in-place modeling, become adaptive or not. And that's a decision you make as a designer. If you want to have adaptivity turned on or turned off, you're going to change some of these checkboxes here inside of the middle of the screen. Down at the bottom, we have express mode. This is something that was added a couple years ago. And what it does for you is it opens up assemblies very, very quickly. We have some basic settings here that say if my unique amount of files exceeds 500, then open it up in express mode. Or I can just say open full no matter what. All the time, just open it to the full assembly. I don't care if it takes five minutes to open. I got time. We can also toggle back and forth between express mode once we are inside of an assembly. So it's not that critical of a setting, but it could make your life a little less frustrating if you're constantly in and out of large assemblies. Next up on iFeature, we have some settings in here which control how iFeatures are handled. On the Part tab, we have some basic settings here as well, such as when I create a new sketch. Do I want to start on an XY plane 100% of the time, or do I want to keep picking which plane to start on? I can also control settings for how my work features appear and how extra information appears behind my feature names as I create them. The last option in here, 3D Grips, is a little antiquated. So I generally turn this off because there's better tools now for modification than 3D Grips. Here on the Sketch tab, we have settings in here to control how our sketches operate and how they look. So on the right-hand side, I have controls for display, where I can turn on and off grid lines and axes. I can adjust my heads-up display when I'm doing dimensional input. On the left-hand side, I have settings that control how my sketch operates for how my cursor works and how geometry appears when I start using the elements inside my sketch mode. So I don't ever snap to the grid. I don't know anybody that does. I keep that off. I turn off the auto project edges for sketch creation and edit. 
that's a default setting for it to be off. And everything else here I usually keep turned on. In the upper left though is an important area under settings. This controls my constraint settings. This button is also available inside the sketch mode, but you can also predefine things here as well. I'm going to click on inference, and the number one thing I change when I get a new installation of Inventor is I always change my constraint inference priority to horizontal and vertical. This helps reduce the amount of chaining constraints that I get when I start building my sketches. Other things you can control in here, though, are the new relax mode settings in 2015 and some other items here on the general tab for sketching environment. I'm going to choose OK to come out of there. The last tab deals with the engineer's notebook. Now this is an environment where we can actually add notes and text and other pieces of information so we don't have to put them into a Word document or put them in an email. It can always just be part of the file. And this just controls how those items look. I'm going to choose OK down here at the bottom of the screen to exit out of the application options. As a reminder to you as a user, if you're ever going to reinstall Inventor, those application options will reset. However, there is an option at the bottom of your screen in the application options to do an import or an export of your file settings, and it will save a majority of what you see in those tabs, but it doesn't save everything. So I would always recommend before you do a reinstall to export your application options, so that way when you come back in after a reinstallation, you can re-import them. So this has been a look at application options inside of Autodesk Inventor.